for a long, long time. Um, I guess about as long as we've been in Troy, 18 years, a little over 18 years, 18 years and uh, four months, five months now. Uh, so it's been, been a little while. So uh, we appreciate the privilege to be here uh, tonight. Brother T, take your Bibles, if you will. Turn with me over to uh, 1 Peter chapter number 5. How many of you like football? Raise your hand if you do. If you like. How many are you going to get to watch football this, this uh, fall? Anybody? <laughs> uh, I, we might have to watch Alabama play themselves. I don't know uh, what, what's going to end up having, happening with all that. But, um, uh, you know, uh, they, <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they can't lose, can they? they um, in football, you know, you've got the fellow with the ball, the quarterback, and then uh, you've got folks he's trying to get the ball to. Uh, when, when that quarterback doesn't unload that ball quickly enough, he becomes a very large target for a lot of people. And, uh, and he starts running backwards, you know, losing ground rather than gaining ground. And uh, tonight I want to talk about that just a little bit. Uh, sometimes we're, um, when, when we take the burdens that, that are part of life and we hold on to them too long, uh, we compound those burdens. And uh, God wants us to cast those burdens, not to carry those burdens. And uh, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and uh, verse, number, uh, verse number 7. It's a very familiar verse, one you know well. Uh, but let's look at it real quick together. If you've got your Bible, uh, it's just a few words there. Uh, when you find it, 1 Peter 5 verse 7, if you will, stand up real quick. Let's read that one verse together. And... And ask the Lord to help us tonight. All right, read it with me together. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Father in heaven, I pray that this particular verse would uh, fill our hearts and minds. And not just the truth of it, but the practice of it. And uh, Lord, we just uh, spoke of, of perfect peace. Uh, I heard the song, It is well uh, with my soul. And Father, it's not well when we're carrying burdens that, that you want us to cast. And uh, help us to learn tonight the value of doing so. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. What we learn in this verse very quickly is this. Um, cares belong to us. It's part of human existence. It's part of life. Uh, you've got problems. Uh, the, um, I mean, you, you don't... You don't spend much time on earth before you realize you have problems. Ada, I couldn't get her to sit still a while ago, and she kept saying, I need to be changed, change me, <laughs> change me. Uh, she realizes she's got problems, and uh, she, she'll be two years old here in a couple days, but she's already figured out that sometimes in life you've got problems. It starts early, doesn't it? And uh, when does it ever end? Anybody know? I think, uh, yeah, when somebody looks at you and says, boy, doesn't he look good, then your problems are over. Uh, but until then, you've got problems as part of life. God knows that. And that's why he says, casting all your care. You couldn't cast something you didn't have. Now, a quarterback would look awful uh, odd if he was back there and after he'd passed the ball off to a, a, uh, a running back, if he just sat back there and, and did this, wouldn't he? Everybody would look at him and think, what are you doing? You're, you're pretending like you've got a ball to throw, but... We can all see through that. Um, God knows that we have cares, and the assumption is it's part of life, and it's real, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult. And um, what should you do with those cares? Well, it, rather than carrying them, uh, cast them. Uh, I want to ask you tonight uh, two questions. One is this, what happens when you carry uh, those burdens? And then the second question I want to ask you tonight is this, what happens when we cast those burdens. And I believe that after we answer these two questions, uh, you should choose, I hope, by the grace of God, to, to cast those burdens rather than to carry them. What happens when you carry the burdens of life that are part of uh, our human existence? Well, uh, probably the wor I'll start in order from the worst to, uh, to the, the least. Uh, probably the worst thing in life that happens when we carry burdens that God wants us to cast on Him it's simply this, we lose the favor of God. We lose the favor of God. Um, notice what he said there in verse number 5. It says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. 
Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Be clothed with, what's the next word? Humility. So when we deal with one another, we're, we're to deal humbly with one another. Um, uh, we're, we're really to, to esteem others as more important and better than ourselves. That's how God wants us to do that. Uh, so we always approach one another and our relationships to one another uh, humbly. Uh, now, if it's important to be humble to one another, towards one another in our relationship, uh, how much more important would it be for us to be humble before our God? You ever thought about that? He says, um, be subject one to another, be clothed with humility. Why? Because God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So we know this, when we're not humble and we're proud, we lose God's favor. We lose God's grace. Grace, I believe the best of it, definition for it, and there, there are a number of applications uh, for grace, a number of different ways that we receive grace and different reasons we receive it for. Uh, but in a broad uh, spectrum, uh, I think you can define grace as this, divine enablement. God giving us the ability to do something that we couldn't do on our own. It's divine enablement. It's God's power in our life. He says, when we uh, are, are not humble, it says, God resists us, but when we are humble, He gives grace. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Uh, when we carry burdens that God wants us to cast on Him, you know what we're telling God? I don't need you. I got this on my own. I can do this. And, uh, and I'll, I'll call you when I need you, God. But right now, I think I can take care of this. You know what God's gonna, answer is going to be to that? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. But you're not going to have my help with it. You're going to carry this by yourself and not with me. And uh, so the worst thing that we can do, or the worst side effect of carrying a burden that God wants us to cast on Him, is losing the, the divine enablement, losing the grace of God, losing the favor of God in that situation. Now, what happens if we lose... Um, if we lose the, the, uh, the, the grace of God, we lose His favor. Well, uh, our burdens begin to be compounded. Uh, how many of you have noticed already uh, throughout life that one bad decision leads to what? Another. And then two lead to another. Sometimes people say, I don't know how in the world my life ever got so messed up. Well, you, you just start tracing the bad decisions back. And it's just one after another, after another, after another. And um, our burdens, what began small, grows over time if we don't have the help of God uh, to, to, uh, to carry them. Well, when we resist God's grace, and uh, we resist God, and God uh, resists us, and we're left without His grace, what does that leave us? It leaves us vulnerable. Not only are our burdens compounded, but all, then we have no, no protection. I think about that quarterback. H how many of you would like to be a quarterback without an offensive line in front of you? Anybody? You'd be kind of a nutty kind of a quarterback if you said, hey, I don't need an offensive line. I've got this all by, by myself. And you grab the ball and you take a few steps back and you've got nobody in front of you to protect you from the onslaught uh, of your opponent. Well, that's what happens we, when we carry burdens that ought to be cast before the Lord. We compound our problems and we make ourselves vulnerable. And guess who our enemy is? Look at verse number 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Look at that. When we carry burdens that we ought to cast on the Lord, we leave ourselves in a place where we're vulnerable. You know, sometimes, um, well, I shouldn't say sometimes, all of the time. If you've watched uh, uh, the, the Wild Kingdom on TV, you've learned a long time ago uh, that these, uh, these lions and tigers and all of these animals of prey, uh, what do they look for? They look for the older and slower. They look for the weak and infirm. They look for the young and uh, less wise uh, to attack. And so those that are most vulnerable get devoured. And when we resist the grace of God 
and we carry burdens that God wants us to cast on him, Satan's looking and he's waiting, and that's his opportunity. And all the devils of hell begin to use that opportunity against us. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I'd like to have God's help, won't you, wouldn't you? Hey, when, when Peter was told that he would deny the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and, and, and his response was what? <laughs> I'll never do that. He took the responsibility for a burden on himself rather than resting on the grace of God to help him through it. He said, I have the strength and the power in my own self not to uh, uh, buckle under that burden and under that pressure. I won't do that. And then, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Satan is looking to do what? Sift you as wheat. He said, he, he knows you're vulnerable. And Satan, he knows you're vulnerable, and he's going to push harder against you. That's what we do. Well, uh, we lose the help that God wants, us to give, uh, wants to give us. We make ourselves vulnerable, and the Satan's attacks uh, begin uh, to be more pronounced. So not only did we compound our problems, now we've invited our enemy into our lives. And what does the Satan want to do? Does he want to give you peace? Absolutely not. He wants to distress you and cause you to feel distraught. A lot of folks in life wonder, why can't I get any peace? Why can't I get any uh, comfort? Why can't things just work themselves out? Well, a lot of times it's because we're carrying burdens that God wants us to cast on him. Well, what happens if you cast those burdens on the Lord? What happens if you realize, hey, this is life. Life is real. You get the call from the doctor, and the doctor says, uh, the tumor that we biopsied, it's cancerous. And we're going to have to do something about it. Your boss comes up and says, hey, we're, cu we're cutting things back a little bit. Uh, you know, the economy's hurting a little bit. We're going to have to let some folks go. We're going to have to trim some hours. Uh, we've got to reduce pay. Uh, and, and what do you do with that? These burdens are real. They're, uh, a, a son or a daughter calls and and gives you news that you think, I wish you hadn't have told me that. Or I wish you would have asked me before you made that decision. I, I wish you, you wouldn't choose this route in life. What happens when, when these burdens, which are real in life, what happens when they come? Uh, and rather than carrying them, you cast them on the Lord. Well, First Peter or Philippians chapter 4 gives us the answer to that. Philippians chapter number 4. Look with me there in verse number 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6. My, matter of fact, do this. Read that first, the first four words with me out loud. Ready? Be careful for what? That word careful doesn't mean you're, you're not looking where you're stepping. That word careful means full of care. You're careful. You're full of care. Um, probably the better word for us would be worry. How many of you know what worry is? Anybody? <laughs> the difference between uh, a, uh, a worry and a, and a burden that's being cast before the Lord is that when we worry about something, do we leave it anywhere or do we take it with us? We take it with us. We pray about it. We say, Lord, I'm casting that care on you. And then we get up from prayer and we continue to worry about it. Well, so that's, that's the opposite of casting. And that's being full of care, is worrying about it. Uh, instead of worrying, instead of being full of care, cast your burdens upon the Lord. And he says, be careful for nothing. Is there anything worth worrying over? You ever thought about that? Jesus said to pray for this. Give us this day our what? We're worried about our 401k and our IRA 40 years from now. God said, There's, that's nothing to worry about. When you wake up in the morning, you pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Hey, we don't even know if we'll have tomorrow to pray for daily bread for. So don't let the cares of tomorrow steal the joys of today. And so uh, he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So he says, Pray about it, put it in God's hands, leave it there, don't worry about it, don't be full of care, and carry on the work that God's given you to do. And what will the result of that be? Look at verse 7, and the what? Peace of God. Now it's a lot better than an adversary roaring, uh, seeking whom he may devour. 
That's a lot better than walking around vulnerable without the grace of God in your life. I like that. I like that peace thing. And he says, um, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, meaning if somebody says, How in the world can you sleep knowing that this is going on? Ask Peter. He was asleep in the jail. Ask Paul and Silas. They were singing praises to God in jail in the midnight hour. How in the world could you do that? Well, you can do that when you know your life is in God's hands and you're trusting Him for it. The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall do what? Keep your hearts and your minds. You know where the, where the uh, battle is for the believer? It's in the mind. Satan wants to steal your peace. He wants to distract your thoughts. He wants to get your attention off of God and, uh, and how good God is. He wants to put your attention on yourself and how, much, how big your problems are. Hey, I tell you what, I don't think there's any problem on earth bigger than the God of, of creation. But the Satan wants us to do it. He wants to take our mind and get it off of God. And he does that when we're filled with care. He does that when we keep our burdens and carry them rather than cast them. And the peace of God. Perfect peace. I like this. Back, back over there in 1 Peter chapter 5. He said, what good reason do I have uh, to, to be assured of the fact that my God cares enough uh, to, to want me to cast those care on Him? Well, it's verse number 7. It says that, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Listen, if God cared enough to hang on the cross of Calvary for your sins and mine. Do you think there's anything that he doesn't care about? He cares about everything. The other day, uh, I, was, uh, I had a little project going on. We were selling a vehicle and trying to get ready for the move. And in the process of selling the vehicle, we had some, um, just some difficulties. Uh, I met the fellow at the bank. He paid me... Uh, you know, $4,400 in $20 bills. I mean, I'm <laughs> counting $20 bills out. I don't know where he got that many $20 bills for. I was kind of, I didn't ask. I didn't want to know uh, where he got that many $20 bills from. So he, and, and I'm, what I'm thinking is these are counterfeit. <laughs> what, what, I'm going to go in here and try to put these in the bank and they're not going to take them. So anyway, we, 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 we're working through all that. I had just been to Lowe's. I had a five-gallon uh, bucket of paint in the back of the car that I was selling him. I had taken the license plate off and put it in the back of the car. And uh, some other things, I'd laid them in the back of the car. I was going to go in the bank. We were going to sign the title and deposit the money. And then he was uh, going to go off. Well, I'm up there at the bank without a vehicle. So I call Caden, uh, my son, or I call my wife. I said, send Caden up to the bank. Tell him to get the paint out of the, the trunk and um, get the license plate out of the trunk and pick me up and give me a ride home. And uh, the, the guy just signed the title to the car, too. I'd given him the title. I said, I'll meet you outside in just a second. He said, I'll, I'll be waiting for you. And so uh, I, I finished my work at the bank. I walk outside, and the guy I sold the car to is gone. The car that I sold him is gone. The paint, uh, I'm thinking, my son must have come and picked it up and forgot to pick me up. So I called the house. I said, uh, where's Caden? And my wife said, oh, he's right here. And I got a text about the same time that I called that said, I forgot the paint in the back of the car. And uh, he didn't get anything else out of the back of the car either. So this guy's riding down the road uh, with uh, my five-gallon bucket of paint and my license plate and all that other stuff in the car. And I'm sitting at the bank without a ride home. And, and I said, well, tell Caden to get up here as fast as he can to pick me up. So I start calling this guy. I said, listen, I've got paint in the back of the car. I need you, I need you to, um, before you get out of town, stop somewhere and let me meet you. And uh, he wouldn't respond to me. And, uh, and I told him, tried to connect with him a few more times. He just never did respond to him. Finally, I realized I've got an extra key in my pocket. And, I, and it's not doing me any good. He needs the key to that car. I said, listen, I've got another key to give you. And uh, he said, okay, meet me at AutoZone. And uh, so I'm glad I had that key. I might never have gotten my paint back. So I ran up there to AutoZone. Caden finally came and got me. We drove up to AutoZone. There he was waiting on me. And I gave him the key, and I jumped out of the car, and I grabbed the paint out of the, uh, out of the trunk of the little car, and I got my license plate and my Yeti cup. You know, I got all that stuff out, important stuff, you know. And I put it in the, in the truck. They got in their car and drove off. We got in the truck and drove off. And uh, I looked over and said, Caden, where's my phone? He said, I don't know. 
I turned the, the car, the truck upside down looking for my phone. I said, I think I had it in my hand when I got out to get the paint out of the trunk. I think I laid it down in the trunk and got the paint out. I said, get on. I don't have another key to give this guy. He's not going to answer my text again. I said, you just drive as fast as you can down the road. And by this time, I'm already upset that I got left at the bank and uh, didn't get a ride home. I'm, I'm upset that he, he didn't get the paint out of the car like I'd asked him to. And uh, now I'm upset that my phone, I left my phone in the trunk. And this guy's on his way to Dothan. I said, son, you got to drive fast. So he's going down 231, about 55 miles an hour. I said, no, son, 70 miles an hour. you got to drive fast. And so he, he's driving, and I'm, I'm just having a panic attack. And then I look in the console of the truck right above the radio, and guess what? There's my phone sitting right there. My wife taught me a long time ago, if you ever lose something, the first thing you need to do is what? Pray. <laughs> you know what? I never did pray about any of that. I just, I just saw a problem. I'm like, we got to fix it. We got to go. And I did it without the help of the Lord. Wouldn't it have been a lot better to, to have some peace? Caden said, boy, Daddy, I'm sure glad you and Mama don't get upset at the same time. I don't know if I can handle that. You know, Mom gets upset, you get upset. But, whoo, if y'all get upset at the same time, I, I think I might just have, you know. Hey, what, what cares are you carrying? What burdens have you grown accustomed to and, and um, somewhat resistant to give to the Lord? Would you, would you take the Lord's advice and cast those cares upon Him? He cares for you. He doesn't want to see you struggle and try to take care of life's problems without Him. He knows there's a better way. Your dads, moms, you know this. you got a son or daughter you're trying to train up and raise up and teach them how to do some things, give them a little bit of space to, to spread their wings. And, and you see they're about to do it the wrong way, and you say, hey, there's a better way to do that. And then they said, oh, no, I got it, Dad. This is, I, I know what I'm doing. And you're like, no, there's a better way. I can, sell you, I, can, I can save you a lot of trouble. I can save you some money. I can save you some time. Um, there's a better way. Oh, no, Daddy, this is the best way to do it. I've see, I saw it on YouTube. This is the way to do it. And then, um, you know, days later, money later, broken things later, they said, now, Daddy, how do you do that again? And he said, here's a little shortcut. I learned this a long time ago. You know, God's like that, isn't he? He's our Heavenly Father. He wants to help us at the front end, not at the back end. Casting all your care upon him, for he what, church? Careth for you. Hey, we're about to go into prayer time, I think Brother T told me. And that's what prayer time on Wednesday night's all about, isn't it? Casting our cares upon him. Let's stand. Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for the privilege to serve you. Thank you for this church. Thank you for Brother T. But Lord, we want to thank you most of all for the help you give us by your Holy Spirit to navigate the deep waters of this life. Thank you that we don't have to do it alone or under our own power. Father, you give us grace, and you give us help, and you stre strengthen us, and you protect us. And Father, you give us peace in the midst of these storms. And we ask that, that you would not let us down even tonight, but show yourself faithful. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For where you're at, if you need to come to the altar, you can come to the altar. Extend this invitation time here. As the Lord spoke to you, maybe you're here tonight and the Lord spoke to you that you can't cast your care on the Lord because you've never asked Him to be your Savior. You've never cast your sin on Him and said, Lord, I can't do this. I can't, I can't take care of my sin. You have to do it or it won't get done. And you've never done that before. Maybe you're here tonight and you said, that's me. Would you, would you say, Brother Justin, I want somebody to help me take the Word of God and show me how I can know for sure when I leave here tonight I'm on my way to heaven. Anybody like that tonight? You'd raise your hand and say, that's me, Brother Justin. I'm not sure, but I sure want to be sure tonight before I leave. Anybody like that? Believers, has the Lord spoken to your heart? There's an altar up here. You can come and die on it to self. Ask the Lord for his help. You have burdens? Why don't you bring them to the Lord? Why don't you bring them to the Lord? That's why you came tonight. To hear from the Lord and to respond to Him.
you want to keep those burdens, there's going to be a lot of things to happen that the Lord doesn't want to happen to you. Things get more complicated. The devil gets that toe hold in. We give a place to the devil. He always wants more than that, just place in our lives. And it's not that he gives us his peace and then we have his peace for the rest of our lives. It's he gives us his peace as we come to him and we cast that on him. And then something else is going to come up and then you're going to cast that on him. And something else is going to come up and you're going to cast that on him. And then something else is going to come up and that's just the cyclical process of the believer. And we have the God of peace living in us so therefore we can have the peace of God when we cast it on him and when we yield to him he'll help us in this and that's what he desires for us not that there's never any problems not that there's never any burdens but in the midst of those that we find and have his peace and then we find and have his peace again and again and again it can be a way of life it can be because that's what he told us Father, we do thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for everything you spoke to our hearts about tonight. I thank you for friends. I thank you for the Till family. I thank you for their faithfulness there at God's Way Baptist Church for over 18 years. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives and the peace that you have had to give them to leave God's way and to go into Missouri there. Father, I pray you prepare the way for them and that you would knit their hearts together with the people there, First Baptist Church in Wildwood. And you'd guide them all along the way. I know there's many burdens to carry in a transition. And Lord, I pray you'd seal the things in our hearts that you've done tonight. Lord, the burdens that we called ourselves casting upon you at this time, may we not just do it in word and then take the burdens back upon our shoulders and get yoked up with that burden again and fall under the weight of it. But may we leave it with you and keep leaving it with you by faith as we look to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to have, if you want to sit, you can, or you can stand. We're going to have one person to close us tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Steve if you would close us in a word of prayer. I don't know if you were here for the prayer request or not, um, but you can still close us in a word of prayer. Um, here.
Amen. Well, thank you for coming tonight. If you want to say anything to Till family, they're here. Tell them bon voyage. And uh, there. All right, take some time in the fellowship before you head out. But thank you for coming. Um, if anybody's going tomorrow, wants to go to the IBFA meeting, let me know uh, there.